I see. Okay. Um, um what I was saying before everything died is the uh the, the Vim line. So it's Ed X Vi Vim and now Neo Vim. That's 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 what I was saying before Canonical yeah. wanted to ruin me or something. I don't know. Um <laughs> oh, so you're actually going with that. <laughs> yeah, that's 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 what we're going with. That's the that's the story we're going that's canon. with. Yep, that's absolutely. Canon. So yes, um Ed Browse. Yeah, uh, Ed Browse. So I was using Ed Browse for a while because the web the web didn't really require JS or anything. Right. Really. Okay, you had some flash pages, YouTube. Um sure. and like but I didn't really care about that too much. I would use my phone for mm -hmm. that. I'd look I'd go on the internet because I need to look up something on Wikipedia for homework or something. Ah, yeah, 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 yeah. If you're watching this, young people, don't use Wikipedia for your homework. <laughs> um But that's what I did. So I would go because Wikipedia was accessible because everything was navigable by headings. Um, that was it. Um, so I would use Ed Browse, and then I switched to Firefox when I switched to Vinix, mm -hmm. um, and that was fine for a while. Um, bear in mind, I've always been a big proponent of AdBlock, so I've used AdBlock extensions for as long as I can remember, and I always also use, um, I also use like ad blocking dns mm -mm. um because i don't like ads ads are like the bane of my existence i'll get onto this in a second in fact you know what i'll get onto it now because it's relevant to web sure. web stuff live regions aria live regions mm -hmm. those live regions that do this thing where this ad will uh this ad will stop in x seconds mm -hmm. they are usually programmed as assertive live regions so they will interrupt Whatever else is speaking, to give you that info. Oh, stop! I'm looking stop at the it. um the MDN docs right now. Uh, there's a note right near the top. Assistive technologies will generally only announce dynamic changes in the content of a live region, including an ARIA live attribute. Um, start with an empty live region, then in a separate step, change the content inside the region while explicitly documenting the specification. Browsers slash assistive technologies do include special handling for role alert. In most cases, the, con yes. the content inside role alert regions is announced, even when the region which already contains the notification alert message is present in the initial markup of the page or injected dynamically into the page. However, note that role alert regions are depending on the specific browser slash assistive technology combination automatically prefixed with alert when they are announced. Yes. Stop putting your ads, your dynamically loading, dynamically changing ads, in alert regions. Uh-huh, uh-huh. You are user-hostile. <laughs> you actually make the web suck. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Stop doing it. <laughs> I feel like this this episode has been a lot of me just yelling at people to stop doing <laughs> Yeah, I think... Look, I think that's, that's fair, to be honest. Like, if you want to know what this is like, have someone shout hello in your face every five seconds when you're trying to read. Right, right, right. Okay, okay. You'll, you'll, you'll really hate them <laughs> for doing it. <laughs> well, not only, not only hello. Don't you want to hear about whoppers? You yeah. Want, you want to hear a Big Mac? You want to hear a Big Mac? New about whoppers. Very important. Ignore whatever you're actually focused on. Ignore the reason why you're actually on the page. No. Yeah. You gotta, you gotta, you gotta consume the ads. The, the, the worst ones are like. I don't know if I should really go into this, but I'm going to anyway, and I guess you can edit it out. <laughs> but when you're on a website, and it's one of those websites that really doesn't care what ads they serve, mm. and you're trying to give a presentation about something, and you're on one of these websites because it happens to be like the like whatever it is that they're doing, like this article or whatever, is happens to come up in your presentation. Mm -mm. And you've man you're not screen sharing because you're just reading it yourself, but you have your audio routed through so that like people can hear whatever it is you're trying to show them mm. and you get an ad for inappropriate content <laughs> that has an alert tag <laughs> oh, shut up. <laughs> okay okay yeah that's a problem maybe don't do that and when they send them as push notifications mm -hmm. also bad <laughs> Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I'm so glad that browsers let you block push notifications now. Mm -hmm. 
Like, that's good. They used to not do that. <laughs> anyway, um, kind of irrelevant, but <laughs> funny anecdote for you, though. <laughs> this has happened. <laughs> I have had this happen at serious talks multiple. Oh, that's fun. So, um, um, back to the web question. Yes. Um, you asked if it's gotten worse. It's gotten worse. Um, yes, uh-huh. but it's not just gotten worse because the web has gotten worse. It's gotten worse because, um, the way that it was being handled in Orca and ATSPI was not very good at handling really big pages. Mm. Um, and that's no fault of anyone's. It's just how it was, right? The, like, it just wasn't very good at handling massive pages. And so you'd end up with slowdown as your page got bigger. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. That is now fixed. I can browse really big pages now, and I don't have a problem. Um, and a big part of that are WYSIWYG ads, again. Mm. Um... um but I, because I use an ad blocker and everything, I found that <laughs> I can mostly deal with the internet. I see. Okay. Um, okay. Apps that implement keyboard shortcuts properly are great. <laughs> Gmail is an amazing example of this. Mastodon is another one. <laughs> they have their own keyboard shortcuts. And while you need to turn off like your navigation keys function of a screen reader right, right. to use them, they are good. <laughs> I love that. Um, Twitter was the first place I knew did it. Okay. Um, but then I left Twitter for reasons. Sure, um, fair. But yeah, so I think the web has gotten harder in some cases and better in others. Mm. Um, with improvements in web accessibility, because everything is going web-based, there's massive improvements in web accessibility coming. When web apps were just starting to really be a thing, right. they were really bad, and it was really awful to use them. Right. That's starting to improve. So kind of as kind of as companies sort of ditch the idea of desktop applications and do everything on the web, I guess their accessibility teams kind of move to over improve, to that right? as well. Yeah, it has to improve because everything's going that way. Mm. Um, sometimes I'll still take browsing on a phone over a computer. Mm-hmm. Because mobile sites tend to be better. Mm-hmm. I don't know why that is. I guess because there's less Less space for them to clutter, clutter things. Very possible. Um, like there used to be a website called basic.facebook.com. Okay. And then they took it away for some unknown reason, and I think they brought it back, but maybe not. I don't know. Um, but Facebook have about a hundred different ways of accessing their website, and all of them are not great. <laughs> hmm. Like they're all kind of bad, for one reason or another. I'm seeing references to something called mBasic a couple of years ago. Yeah, that's it. That's it. Ah, okay, okay. mBasic. We used it on, like, Symbian phones and whatever. Mm-hmm. Okay. Uh, but so... yeah, so I think the web has gone... Go, uh, the web ha- went backwards Right. Went from when everything was just static text. Mm. The web went backwards from there into, like, embedded Flash, which was not accessible <laughs> at all. Um, right to now html5 which is has its issues mm. but is significantly better and things are being done to make it better still mm-hmm. i still don't like web apps really I'll, i i i don't mind it for like discord or whatever sure but like my spreadsheets not a web app mm-hmm. my text editor is not a web app mm-hmm. not a... <laughs> um i'm not saying my code editor because visual studio code but like my plain text i'm editing Markdown or something. Yeah. Not a web app. What do you go to for that? Nano? Um, Vim? Emacs? You joke, but I used to. Um, Emacs is a good one because Emacs speak exists and mm. speech, speech, uh, speech EL exists, mm. which are both um, enable speech in Emacs. Emacs speak was really good because it allowed like indicating font and attribute changes by changing the voice and the voice profile. Okay. Which was like a really nice way of um, of getting that kind of info, but mm-hmm. Emacs is super complicated. No, um, I just use Pluma. Pluma? The Mate text editor. Oh, okay. I just use that. Because you can install it independently of the desktop because they don't, they don't make it depend on the rest of the desktop. Mm-hmm. 
So I just install that on basically everything. <laughs> this is the thing. Everyone's like, oh, you should try this new software. And I'm like, but I've had this setup that works for me. Right. Um, please leave me alone. Um, <laughs> I, I did see... I know it looks like I'm stuck in 1995, but like, it works. <laughs> 